I now have a set of cast iron castings for cylinders. The set comprises of a pair of cylinders, a pair of rear cylinder covers, a pair of front cylinder covers, a pair of steam chests, and a pair of valves. In terms of machining operations, my focus will be on getting the cylinder bored. And to do that, I first need to clean up the casting, remove this flashing, and in particular, this big old lump on the top here. So I tackle that first with a hacksaw before moving on to a file to clean up all those bits of flashing. And then finally, I use a belt sander to give a real good clean up to one end. Before I can start the boring, I do need to get a reference surface. And for that, I'm going to use the top of the cylinder, what will effectively be the steam chest. As we can see here, I've got the block mounted in my vise in the milling machine. I have set the vise horizontal front to back and also aligned the jaws to the X axis. I would normally use the rear jaw of the vise as a reference face, but I really struggled to get the cylinder aligned correctly. So instead I use the front. You can see I've got a bit of bar against the back jaw to ensure that the two faces aren't fighting each other. Okay, I've got the fly cutter fitted. As we can see, it's a bit of a Heath Robinson device made up from an original tour that came with the milling machine and a big lump of mild steel bar, which I've got a slot in to allow me to fit one of these glands indexable tools. I'm going to touch off on a high spot and then probably go with a deepish cut. Well, deepish, 0.2 of a mil. Let's give it another go. Once I get a good surface on the top, I measure from the top down to the bottom of the casting. I'm looking for 49.5 millimeters, which leaves me round about nine and a half mil to come off. Okay, I'm down to where I need to be. As we can see, I've removed a lot of material most of which is now scattered across my workshop floor. So a lot of cleaning to do. So there we go. That is one finished face. From that I can go forwards. But before I do so, let me go and do the same on the other cylinder. Now that I have a reference face, I'm able to mark off the center lines for the cylinder bore. First I go with the horizontal center line and then using an angle plate, I mark off the vertical center line. For the vertical center line, I'm actually using the outside of the casting as my reference point. These center lines are quite important as I'll be using them when I mount the cylinder blocks on the lathe. To bore the cylinder, I'm going to be using a between centers boring bar, which means that the cylinder block will somehow need to be attached to the saddle, but positioned so that the center line of the cylinder is on the center line of the spindle. I've measured the distance between the spindle and the top of the saddle, and that's 75.5 millimeters. If we look on the cylinder block, I've got a distance of 27 millimeters between the center line of the cylinder and the reference face, which is a steam chest face. That means I need to offset the cylinder block by 48.5 millimeters. And to that effect, I've used some 19 mil or three quarter inch plate and machined these two pieces here. So these are both pretty damn parallel at 48.5 millimeters. And I'll be positioning the cylinder block somewhere around about here. Unfortunately, what I discovered after machining these blocks is that the surface of the saddle is not parallel with the spindle bore. It slopes from front to back. And to deal with that, I've got some shim stock underneath the two lumps of mild steel I'm using to support the cylinder. The surface of both of these blocks is now pretty damn parallel with the spindle bore. I think I've got 0.01 millimeter variation across around about 75 mil there. Plenty good enough. To position the cylinder block with respect to the X axis, I'll use the dial gauge and get both of these ends roughly the same. I'm, I'm not looking for hyper accuracy here. And of course, this is a, a cast face, so it's not going to be flat by any stretch of the imagination. 
That is within 0.03 mil. I'm more than happy with that. I'm sure there's a really good reason why I shouldn't be using these clamping posts as I am. But there we go. Let's see how we get on. To align the vertical center line of the cylinder to the center of the spindle, I'm doing it by eye. I've got a parallel against the front face or this face of the cylinder. And you can see here where I've visually aligned it to the vertical center line. And then further down on the parallel, I've got the center of the spindle, which is represented by the center that's in the spindle, aligned to the same edge on the parallel. It won't look quite parallel in this picture because of the angle the video has been taken at, but hopefully that makes sense. And with it centered, I'd lock off the top slide. I've got a boring bar on the lathe between the centers. This is the first of two. This is just to get the cylinder bore large enough to me to move on to my other boring bar, which is a larger diameter piece of bar. The tool is here. This is actually a carbide tip, one of the budget ones that we can get hold of. And again, this is just to get me going. I'm using the power feed on the saddle. We'll run that all the way through once. Excuse the pun, but there's little point in boring you with video of the saddle traversing as I open up the bore in this cylinder block. Once the bore was completely circular all the way through, and I'd opened up to around about 31mm diameter, I stopped and have now put in my larger boring bar. This is a 25mm diameter bar, so it should give me a little bit more rigidity for the final cuts. Also, with this bar, it's much easier for me to make fine adjustments to the depth of cut. To measure the bore, I am using a telescopic bore gauge. I'm not a great lover of these. There is a bit of an art to using them, and it's an art that I don't really possess. But by taking multiple readings each time, I come to a consensus as to what I think the bore is, give or take, plus or minus 0.02 millimetres. And in case you're wondering, the LCD display on this micrometer doesn't work, so I'm actually taking the readings off the barrel. My boring bars are quite simple. They consist of a piece of bar centre drilled at each end and with a hole drilled somewhere close to the middle in which I fit the cutting tool. I've also drilled and tapped a couple of holes for grub screws to hold the tool in position. The challenge with this simple design of boring bar is how to accurately set the cutting tool. So to that effect I've made this little tool. As we can see it consists of a micrometer head that can be clamped to the boring bar. On this bar I have drilled a couple of locating holes to help me position the tool in the same place every time. But that is quite a crude feature and the positioning is far from exact. Once the tool is clamped in position I screw the micrometer head up against the back of the tool and then by holding the tool back against the micrometer head I loosen off the grub screws. I screw the micrometer in by the desired amount and re-tighten the grub screws. And then of course remove the tool and refit the boring bar. Clearly for this tool to work I have to remove the boring bar from the lathe every time I make the adjustment. And I should also make it very clear that the adjustments are also relative. So for each adjustment all I can do is move the tool by a given amount. I'm now on the final pass and although this video may make it look as if this has been quite a simple operation I've had a few challenges on the way. Chatter has been a big problem and I've tried different tool materials be it HSS or carbide tipped as well as tool geometries and of course varying my cutting speeds and I think I've managed to bring that under control as there is little evidence on this final pass of chatter occurring. Thirty three point zero four point zero four overbore. I was really trying to get that bang on thirty three, but I can live with oversized by point zero four of a mil. What's that? Just under two thousand. 
Modern digital cameras seem to have an amazing ability to make the finish on any of my cuts look really bad. I'm not sure the bore is as bad as it looks in this picture, but I may still end up running a hone now before I look to fit the pistons and rings. That aside, I'm going to wrap this video up here, and as always, say thanks for watching.